What is pulp protection? Teeth are exposed to thermal changes, chemicals and bacteria. These can lead to pain upon contacting a tooth. Pain is more likely when dentin is exposed than when enamel is intact. When detrimental, these three are referred to as insults to the pulp. Trauma can also be an insult to the pulp. Recall that dentin structure contains tubules and the tubules contain a portion of the odontoblast. The odontoblast cell body is located at the periphery of the pulp with the odontoblastic process extending into the dentinal tubule. So, anything that contacts the dentin has a pathway or open access to the pulp. Dentin is exposed during most operative procedures. Dentin is also exposed on roots and coronal surfaces due to abrasion, erosion and or attrition. Today's presentation is about some things the dentist may do to protect the pulpal tissue from insult. With me today is an expert in pulpal pathology. Welcome, doctor. Thank you. Pulp protection is thought of as what the clinician or patient does to protect the pulp from these three sources of insult to the pulp. The patient's role is oral care, brushing, flossing, topical fluoride, topical calcium phosphate paste etc. Correct. The dentist's role consists of application of a medicated liner or base, correct use of restorative materials and instrumentation, etc. Well, doctor, what causes these insults to the pulp? Of course caries is a major factor, along with microleakage around a restoration and subsequent bacterial invasion. Non-carious lesions and diatrogenic damage also contribute to pulpal problems. The tooth's role is to create secondary and tertiary dentin in response to age, time and response to insult. The best protection for the pulp is the dentin itself. 1.5 to 2 mm of remaining dentin thickness is the best pulp protection. So, if at least 1.5 mm of dentin remains, usually no additional treatment is needed. If less than 1.5 mm of dentin remains between the preparation and the pulp, then we usually use a liner or a base applied to the floor and axial wall of the preparation. Non-carious dentin exposure will be discussed further in another lecture. These non-carious areas like abfraction lesions may or may not be sensitive to the patient. When sensitive, we can apply a layer of desensitizing material or place a restoration to cover and occlude the dentinal tubules. Recall that inner dentin and outer dentin differ in structure and composition. Several types of materials have been used for pulp protection and may fall into one or more of these groups. Varnishes have been used extensively in the past but are not currently recommended. One example is copper light. Varnish was applied in multiple coats and applied on both enamel and dentin. Liners and bases are often the same material. Liners are commonly used in deep preparations. One example is Fuji Liner LC, which is a glass ionomer material. Another is Dical, which is a calcium hydroxide material. Liners are applied in one or two coats and applied only on the dentin. Bases are often the same material as liners. Bases are commonly used in very deep preparations. One example is Fuji Liner LC. Bases of Fuji Liner LC are applied in three or four coats and applied only on the dentin. IRM is used as a temporary restorative material. Currently, it is not typically used as a base. Liners and bases are often the same material. The difference between calling it a liner or calling it a base is the thickness of the pulp protection material applied. Some materials are only used as liners, such as calcium hydroxide, and some are only used as bases, such as IRM. The material is prepared about the consistency of nail polish. 
It is applied similarly in that you paint one layer and allow to dry and then apply another layer if needed. This is an example of dual cured. Hybridization is used with all composite resin restorations. The etch, prime, bond process results in hybridization of the dentin. There is also a method slash procedure where amalgam can be placed after hybridization. With hybridization materials may be placed on both enamel and dentin. Many pulp protection materials are chemical cured two-part systems. In a two-part system, the two parts are often a catalyst and a base. These may be two pastes or a liquid and powder. If not a two-part system, the set is typically initiated by exposure to light. These are referred to as light-cured or photo-cured material. Dual cured is a third method used in dentistry. Dual cured means it is both chemical cured and photo cured. The material is mixed like a two part system and then exposed to the curing light. Whether to use a liner or base depends on the restorative material used and how close the dentin floor is to the pulp. When the pulp is exposed, we must apply liners. Pulp exposure is when you actually see the pulp. A favorable pulp exposure is a very small pinpoint size red dot, a perforation, in the deep dentin. If the exposure is larger than a pinpoint size, the prognosis is decreased significantly. Liners can serve as a chemical barrier and conceal a pulp exposure. The current liner material recommended is to use a glass ionomer material. These characteristics make glass ionomers the best current material for liners and bases. Crushing strength is important as the liner base is subject to chewing and clenching forces. Before use of glass ionomer, Dentistry experienced fractures of some amalgams after in-service for a number of years. It was determined that the liner base material could dissolve and or fracture. This led to the amalgam having its foundation washed away, thus the amalgam would break. Think of a road, near a ditch perhaps, where erosion has washed away oil. The road is brittle like amalgam and crumbles without a solid foundation. Dical has pros and cons. It is soluble and has low strength as undesirable qualities, but does provide a smooth surface and releases calcium ions. What happens when the pulp is exposed during a restorative procedure? When the pulp is exposed, a direct pulp cap is performed. An indirect pulp cap is performed when you know you are very close to the pulp but you don't see a red dot. The dentin in the area may or may not be pink. Dical is applied to the exposure or near exposure. Then a glass ionomer is applied in a thin layer over the dical. In cases where no exposure exists in a deep excavation, Apply glass ionomer to the deepest area. No need to place on any dentin where you have 1.5 mm of dentin remaining. Do not place on the DEJ and Orkivo surface margins. What about the direct pulp capping? A red dot simulates a pinpoint exposure of the pulp. Digal, chemical cured, is placed on the exposure. You only need a small dot of Digal. Why not cover more surface area? Because dical is soluble and lacks strength. Glass ionomer, dual cured, is then placed to cover the dical and any other deep areas of the preparation. Deep excavation is when there is less than half a millimeter of dent in between the floor of the prep and the pulp. Why cover the dical doctor? 
because dical is soluble and lacks strength. One possible way to avoid a pulp exposure, when we are nearing the pulp, we can stop excavating, place a medicated temporary filling, and wait six to eight weeks before completing the restoration. There are several things to avoid when using liners and bases in restorative procedures. Never use zinc oxide eugenol materials, trade name is IRM, Intermediate Restorative Material, under the composite restoration. The eugenol inhibits polymerization of resins. Never place liners or bases on the DEJ or enamel. My recommendation is to keep the liner base off of the DEJ. This ensures that the material is not on enamel. Why not on the enamel? It is not needed on enamel. If the liner base material is at the margin, now we have a material that is much weaker and some are soluble at the cavosurface margin. All margins are exposed to the oral cavity, wet, thermal changes, bacteria, and subject to micro leakage. The liner base will not stand up to the environment of the oral cavity as well as the restorative material. However, we do use some glass ionomers as restorative materials. These restorative materials can be placed to restore a preparation or as a first increment at a cavo surface margin and often are used in what is called the sandwich technique. Varnish is not currently recommended. However, if varnish is being used, it coats the dentin and will not allow for hybridization with the dentin. It will not permit the obtunding, soothing property of the eugenol and zinc oxide preparations to reach the pulp. It inhibits calcium ions to reach the dentin. It prevents chelation of polycarboxylate cement with the dentin. Remember, if you have 1.5 mm or more of sound dentin thickness, you have good pulp protection. Please review the procedures for pulp protection. Thank you. Check out some other videos for the interested viewer.